I have a question for you. Do you ever feel like you're being watched? Strange. Hello friends, it's me, Kit. When I'm not out fighting crime, I like to follow my friends at nightriderhistorians.com. Check it out. Hey guys, Joe here again. Um, I wanted to take a minute before I get into the uh, introduction for today's video to just thank you guys so much for the uh, incredible response to um, the last video about the insert dash reveal. I mean, I've had people uh, just commenting like crazy, liking like crazy, sharing it. It's been awesome. Um, I even had someone who was involved with uh, the show and with building that dash contact me and he's going to help me to um, get the pieces, the missing pieces, the logic kind of put back together, the stuff that's missing. So it's really exciting. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, please go and uh, watch that video as well. But today I'm going to shift gears just a little bit and we're going to do an episode all about scanners, kit scanners to be specific. So what you guys see behind me is actually a screen used Knight Rider front bumper, a screen used scanner, and this particular piece we have dubbed affectionately the Hoff Nose. Um, and we call it that because this piece was owned by David Hasselhoff. When the show ended in 1986, um, the cast and crew of Knight Rider gifted this to David and he owned it up until 2014 at which point um, we purchased it at auction. So um, today I'm going to give you a little bit of a peek kind of under the hood even though there's not really hood um, on the scanner and kind of how it works and whatnot and then we'll dive into the other screen use scanners. We've got um, quite a lot of uh, information for you on the scanner so I think you're going to want to stay tuned for this one. All right, so here we have the Hoff Nose. Um, as I stated previously, this was gifted to David Hasselhoff in 1986 when the show ended. This is actually a bumper that they removed from one of the screen use cars when the series had concluded, and the scanner they removed from one of the screen use cars. So the circuitry driving the scanner is 100% original to the show. And if you listen carefully, you can even hear the original relays clicking. Now, a couple things. First of all, you notice a bulb is out, so um, we have to repair that. But the other thing you'll notice is on uh, the, the right side here, you see that the two wires for those bulbs are backwards, so it's kind of scanning weird. The reason that's like that is because in 1986, whenever um, they removed these pieces from the screen use car and placed them, mounted them on this board, whoever uh, built this and put it together accidentally crossed two of those wires. So um, we have a video of this uh, Hoff bumper sitting in David's living room with the scanner on and you can see it has that same um, backwards wiring. So we decided to leave it. Um, just because that's the way it, it came from uh, the studio to David. So there's a number of press photos that we have of this nose. Not really press photos. Well, some of them are. Some of them are behind the scenes, whatnot. But photos from David uh, showing this in his leopard print living room back in the 80s and 90s. And the story goes um, that, you know, he had this piece for many, many, many years. And in 2014, he had a, a large auction through Julian's Auctions. And this was one of the pieces he decided to sell. So um, AJ went there in person and we acquired it. Now, the fog lights are not original. They, um, I'm not sure where they got those fog lights from, but they're just kind of a generic fog light with a, um, a brake brake bulb, the same ones you see in the regular Trans Am brake bulbs put in there. So those aren't original, everything else is. You can see that this nose is um, one of the ones that has the fake indents. But what's interesting about this particular nose is we believe that this is actually 
a nose molded from an original season one nose with the Plex season. Because if you feel this, and I know you can't, but I can, um, the this is simply the this is not indented it's simply flush with the rest of this with a groove in so what that tells us is that whenever they made the mold um they made a mold of the first season nose with the plexis intact and then cast a piece from that giving it the illusion that it still had the plexis in now we've also seen other original noses uh, in fact we have one on one of our uh, on our other original car that has the indents that are actually indented down in. This entire piece is indented down in, but on this one, it's not. So we believe this is a very, very um, early cast from you know, a season two nose that they casted from an original season one. Um, has a little bit of damage here, right on the end. Again, this was like this when we received it, so we're leaving it. It's a little chunk out of the um, front of it there. They built this board, this is wood, that they polished and painted, just to kind of cover it. Because as you know, that the bumper is more of a V-shape on top, and they didn't want to be able to see down behind it into the electronics. So they built this nice little custom piece, which actually I think goes really, really nicely on this bumper. It finishes off very nicely. So if we look down here, that blue box you see is actually the relay control. Or it's the relay box that houses the relays. And then there's also a logic board inside of there as well. Before we take a look at the underside, let's um, see it with its lights on. So there you go. The lights do work. There's a switch underneath to control the lights. So let's take a look now at the underside. So here's what you see on the underside again. They took the, you know, the original V shape of the dash, which you can see, which is fiberglass. And then they riveted in um, a lip underneath this panel. So when this panel closes, which is wood, um, it hits the lip and provides a nice uh, flush um, appearance on it. And then this one screw in the middle, you unscrew that and the whole thing drops down. Down here, we've got, this is the switch for the fog lights. This is the switch to turn on the uh, scanner and this red light will turn on and then over here i'm sorry this is the power switch for the entire unit this turns master power on this is for the fog lights this turns the scanner on and this adjusts the scanner speed so again these two were kind of cannibalized from the uh, original scanner circuitry inside they there's a from the control box and they just ran the wires down there to be able to control it from underneath so there is the Hoff nose. The show used basically three different styles of scanner bars themselves. Now what you're looking at here are representations of two of them. The third one that we don't have here is actually the original scanner bar from the pilot presentation. Now I'm sure a lot of you uh, remember that uh, portions of the pilot kit had a slightly different looking front nose. I guess slightly is not really, it's it's very different front nose. And with that came a stubbier, a taller and narrower scanner bar. Um, we don't have an example of that one, but we do have an example of the two styles that the show used once Michael Chaffe came in and redesigned the front nose. So we'll start with this version. This is a, a faithful reproduction of what Michael Chaffe's um, scanner bar would have looked like. So uh, what he did was, as far as we can tell, he took the circuitry from the, the original scanner bar, uh, from the original scanner that was used in the pilot presentation, and he simply, he or his team simply crafted a new housing for the bulbs to fit with the newly designed front nose. So um, what he did is he took aluminum stock and um, you can't see on the inside, but there's a C channel that he cut pieces this long, drilled holes in it, and then screwed it all together, um, routed out a groove in the top and bottom pieces for the scanner lens to go in, and then simply uh 
put a bracket on the back to screw it into the slam panel on the on the uh, car. Drilled holes for the halogen bulbs and two screws to hold them in. So that's um, a very good representation. We don't know where the original scanner bar is. Bars are, I guess. There were multiple. Um, it's very possible someone has them. It's very possible that they were just tossed in the trash. We don't know. But that's that's kind of what the bar looked like originally. Now, at some point in the series, and we're not sure exactly when, but the series switched to uh, bars that were machined like this. So the one you see here... Again, this one is a reproduction. We have we own um, two of the actual original screen use bars, but this one's a reproduction you're looking at here. So um, this one, it's, as you can tell, it's a little bit cleaner. There's not any screws. There was these were all welded together and smoothed and all that stuff. Um, we have mounting tabs here, and normally there would have been two screws on each side to hold the tabs in. The tabs are to kind of keep the lens in place because there's a machined lip on the bottom and that lip holds the lens in on that side. So if we look at it from the side, you can see how that worked. Now this particular bar has been powder coated. The ones on the show were not powder coated. They were just painted black. The insides of each one of the bulb housings were not painted. They were left raw steel color. On, well, that's that's not 100% true. On some of them they were, and some they were painted black. So that was kind of, I guess, whoever was building them for that particular day, or that particular bar. Um, and again, similar to this bar on the back, there's a big hole drilled in the middle for the H1 halogens. Two screws to hold the, the bar in like that. Now, one thing this reproduction bar does not have, but our originals do have, is how they were mounted to the car itself. So unlike this bar where it had an L bracket that got screwed in, on the original um, bars of this style, they actually drilled, there's a hole drilled here, hole drilled about here, and they simply drill, ran screws down in um, into the slam panel to hold the scanner bar in. But that is um, a representation of what the scanner bar looks like as far as we know there were no other styles used in the show besides the two you see here and the third one i mentioned um so now let's talk about scanner controllers what you are looking at here are five original scanner controllers used in the various kits in the series um i'll go over each one of them here and a little bit of history behind them shortly uh, once again, the the representation we don't have here is the original scanner circuitry that was um, designed and built for the pilot presentation and then subsequently used um, throughout the first second and second season somewhat. Um, as you guys probably have noticed uh, watching the show, in the first couple years, there are a few rare instances where you see Kit's scanner going in a pattern other than his standard back and forth sweep. Uh, if you look in the pilot, there's a couple scenes where you have two uh, scanner lights kind of chasing back and forth. Um, there's some scenes in the first season where you see the scanner only traveling one direction different things like that. As a matter of fact, if you watch the opening intro for the show, right after Kit races towards you in the desert, and then you see a close-up of his scanner going, you will notice that the outer two bulbs, this one and this one, are not on. His scanner is only using the inner six bulbs going back and forth at a fairly fast rate of speed, so it looks almost solid. Um, that was one of the eight scan patterns that were available in that original scanner design. They only made, I believe, one scanner that had all of those complex patterns. And that was the scanner that was used in the Hero Car. The, the last evidence we have it being used is in Soul Survivor. Whenever um, Kit CPU is taking over, you see an alternate scan pattern. Um, we believe that all of the other cars that they used simply had um, 
logic in them that you would turn the power on and they would simply do a sweep back and forth. You could change the speed, but that was about it. So with that all said, what you're looking at here, again, these are all original scanners taken from screen used Knight Rider cars. Um, we got these from uh, a friend and that person will remain uh, nameless just so they don't get inundated with uh, fans asking questions and whatnot because um, we've been friends with this person for many years now and they were gracious enough to uh, give us these and we just want to kind of honor that privacy but uh, we thought it was something that uh, you guys kind of deserve to see uh, so these four in black as we understand it these these scanners were all used in various Knight Rider cars the best guess is um, see you know later season one used in season two used in season three and their functionality is simply toggle switch to turn on and off uh rheostat to adjust the speed and an led bar graph display on the inside so you can see how fast the scanner was going none of these currently work none of these five work they will all work by the time we're done with them but uh again another project for another day so just taking kind of a, a quicker look at um, these boxes so this one and some of these as you can see have been cannibalized um because the story goes, these were in use for the series, but the production was having a lot of issues with them. Um, technical issues, the scanner would, you know, not work or it wouldn't pattern correctly or whatnot. So um, uh, our mutual friend came in and redesigned the circuitry and um, the result were the blue box scanners. And at that point, all of the black ones were discontinued and all replaced by the blue box ones. Block, blue box ones. That's hard to say. <clears throat> so, um, chances are some of the parts for these were uh, cannibalized to build the newer blue box versions. Uh, the new blue box for blue box versions um, were, you know, very highly reliable, and I don't think they had hardly any issues the rest of the series once they switched to those. So. Taking a look, I mean, you can see this one is missing the um, LED display. We still have the toggle for the on and off, the uh, rheostat to adjust the speed. There's the remnants of some double-sided tape from whenever they attached it, probably to the side of the dash. Uh, also still a bracket for whenever they screwed it on. And then this would have been, oh, there would have been a wire coming out here, an output to the uh, relay box and ultimately to the scanner bar. And this one is... Um, you know, most of the circuitry is still there. Again, the bar is missing. You can see the switch is missing. Um, some chips back there and whatnot. But um, then we have this one. Circuitry is inside of here, but it's missing the rheostat and the uh, bar graph and the output wire. This one is the most complete of all of them, and this is probably the one that will end up working first. And once we get this one working, it'll be a template to restore all of these. Um, you can see this one still has its bar graph, it still has the rheostat, it's still got its switch. It's got the output with its cinch connector on it to connect to the relay panel. So um, these were you know, taken out of use um, in, I think, early 1985 replaced with these blue box versions. Now, this this one um, is also non-functional, but it's complete except for uh, the, the rheostat here, which we'll, we will fix. But um, yeah, once they switch to these, no more issues. So there's kind of your background. Um, you know, we'll do another, a whole nother video series once we get into the restoration of these uh, boxes, but the plan is is to again get them all functional. Maybe pair them up with um, a reproduction scanner bar and do some kind of a nice display to put on a shelf, so we can see each one of them working. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please share it. Please like it. Please leave us a comment. Please subscribe to this channel. 
Um, we are actively trying to bring you some exclusive Knight Rider content that has never been seen before. And your likes and your shares and your comments and you subscribing um, really helps to motivate us to continue to create great content. So thank you.